Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Wednesday, January the 27th in Toronto. Uh, gorgeous day. We're still in lockdown, but this morning I want to talk about magnetic navigation. If anybody has watched my videos, you know that I'm very interested in magnetism. And uh, I've got some various magnetic devices here. I've got a Hall Effect Sensor Digital Compass, which I built in, let's say, around 1996, something like that. I've got a Honeywell HMC5083. This is a three degree of freedom uh, accelerometer sensor. And there we've got an NXP uh, nine degree of freedom uh, accelerometer. This is, uh, this is my original Silva. It's a Swedish Ranger compass, which I used back in uh, the early uh, 70s on an Arctic survey for mineral magnetometers. And this is a compass I bought a couple of years ago. It's a global compass. It'll work all over the world. It's a Sunto, a Finnish compass. And this is <clears throat> uh, a Brunton Transit, which I use uh, with celestial navigation. Let's just start off here. This compass here, the Silver Ranger, I used up in Northern Canada. I was on a mineral magnetic survey up in the copper mine area, and it's a hand bearing compass. Um, it's very useful, it's got a mirror. You can use the mirror actually to uh, uh, signal planes and stuff like that. So it's got all sorts of uses, and it's got a scale. You can use it on a map and stuff like that. Uh, what was interesting about this compass, um, we were doing a mineral magnetic survey, and there's all sorts of anomalies, magnetic anomalies in the north, and I found over certain areas the compass would spin and do all sorts of weird things. When I went uh, on a project down in Southeast Asia, what I found with the compass was, in Southeast Asia, the needle, you'd have to move the compass almost vertically to get the needle to move. What I didn't realize was compasses are balanced for a particular area. So this one uh, I purchased for North America. So there are little weights on the needle to balance for the, um, the Earth's vertical magnetic field. And that's why I got this particular compass. This is a global compass. And it's got little balancing magnets all around the compass. So you can take it anywhere on the planet and you'll be able to put it in a horizontal plane and use it. So that was, uh, that was an interesting phenomenon which I discovered. This, uh, this compass as well is calibrated in radians. And we'll talk about radians in a minute. Now as we go over to this compass here, or the transit. Uh, what I used this for was getting bearings on the sun. So in celestial navigation, to get a fix, you need two bits of information. You can either have two altitudes to give you a fix, or you can have one altitude and a bearing. Now with this particular um, transit, what happens is I could get, uh, when the sun shines in this little hole here, you can actually get a very accurate uh, bearing on the sun uh, within about one degree. Now, if you consider how how much of an error is one degree, well, um, 360 degrees is two pi radians, so um, 180 degrees is pi radians. So one degree over 180 times pi is approximately one over 180 times three, so that's one of 1 60th. And let's say the distance to your uh, geographic position is 6,000 kilometers um, divided by 30. So you're talking about a 200 kilometer error. So even with one altitude and a bearing, um, your error, uh, your sort of arc error is about 200 kilometers. What you can use that though for is you can use it for an estimated position. And then once you have your estimated position, you can put that into the Mark St. Hilaire method and then take two fixes in the sun and it'll give you a much better position. Now over here, over here, this is interesting. This is the Parallax Board of Education. Parallax was a company, I think it's still in business, and it made um, a portable kind of development system. I've got a BS2 module on there. This is the Dinsmore 1490. It's a Hall Effect sensor. And basically it's got um, Hall Effect sensors um, at north and south and west and east with open, transis open collector transistors. So what happens is if the, 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 if the compass so the electronic compass is aiming at north and one transistor uh, turns on. If it's aiming northwest, then two transistors turn on, the uh, north and the west. If it's aiming west, just the one transistor for west turns on. Um, the reason I like this particular board is I don't like working at home or in the office, so I could actually take this board to Starbucks and program microcontrollers there. So that was uh, the handy point of that. You can see how this thing works. I've got the um, Parallax IDE working. So I can take my compass, and I'm just going to move it around here, and you can see how it changes here. Uh, it changes the orientation. So it's kind of a, I guess, a little primitive 
kind of digital compass, but it, it worked very effectively. So what I want to do next is I want to take the, let's uh, look at this here. I want to take the uh, Honeywell and I want to take the NXP and I'm going to, first I'm going to program them on the Arduino. This is an Arduino module, same idea as the Parallax. It's got a little board here. Uh, you just plug it into your laptop with an IDE and you can program these. These modules are programmed over I2C. And once they've got it working on our Arduino, what I want to do is I want to take those two sensors and bring them over here to my Raspberry Pi. I'm going to put them on here and connect them to the GPIO, get them working with the Raspberry Pi, and then hopefully we'll be able to see the course and various uh, accelerometer uh, data on open plotter. So that's that's the the objective in the next couple of videos and the next week that's what I'm going to be working on.